Ladies and gentlemen, this is internet personality Vangelis, prototypically taking a look at before and after's first full figure release, Six Sigma. This guy came in a blanket of bubble wrap, so what you see is all I've got right now. While I haven't got the slammer tank seen in promo photos so far, this copy of Six Sigma is still meaty enough to provide a hearty bite of what he's all about. When Generations Metroplex surfaced last year, one of the last first things many people thought was, damn, imagine if he had a six-gun to go with him. Well, more than one independent group has somewhat predictably decided to bring that theory to life, and before and after's Six Sigma brings some super clean, super robot proportions to the table. Powerfully legged and stoically visored, Six Sigma stands a somewhat surprising 10 inches tall to the top of his head and 13 inches tall to the tips of his erect backpack cannons. By the way, I'm looking at the black-armed version of Six Sigma. Before and After is doing this color scheme in homage to the G1 toy, and will also be releasing one with red arms fashioned after the old cartoon. I'm okay with either one, but hey, options! Speaking of color work, the white plastic seems to be a pretty good match to Metroplex's own. Some of the red is a darker crimson, but the brighter red bits seem pretty close to Metroplex's ears and cannon. Outside of the Metro comparison, Six Sigma has a simple and effective use of paint and a surprising but topical use of some stickers. Mine were pre-applied and got a little beat up in shipping, so I'm not sure if the final product will come with a sheet or come pre-stickered out of the box. I do want to take a second to give some spotlight to Six Sigma's head sculpt. The sharp edges, the slit visor, and the deep-angled faceplate all come together into a cranium that strokes my headly desires in a lot of the right ways. Whoever designed it subscribes to many of my own favorite Super Robot newsletters. Also, if you want to emulate the classic six-gun image a little harder, you can mount Metroplex's black guns on Six Sigma's shoulders quite simply. Now Six Sigma has guns on his shoulders, and thus, the world moved a little. So usually a posability section would start off, you know, on a Transformers thing, you know, around about this height, but, uh, as you can see, things are a little bit, a little bit tall. So, I can't just tilt my camera up, I gotta jack it up all the way up here. And we can start taking a look at how Six Sigma moves. He starts off moving with, my favorite way to open up, talking about a robot and its posability, ball jointed neck. This thing doesn't go too wild with its range, but it actually does have a decent amount of tilt and lift and nod. And you can also spin it, you can break his neck, and if you're one of those weird people, like 360 degrees, why would you ever need to do this? I mean, you can, but that's, I suppose, your freedom as a human being who's cognitive enough to turn on YouTube and watch toy videos. This guy's shoulders are uh, fully posable, although they are in <clears throat> sections. This thing is on its own kind of deal, uh, but the black arm inside is the key part that can move out and it can move forward and back with, as you can hopefully hear, a little bit of soft ratcheting. There's a bicep swivel. This guy can totally be all like, wings! And it's got a double jointed elbow, which makes me real happy because, uh, Single joint is all that I think was really necessary here, but the double joint allows for just that little extra bit of curl, and I'm the kind of weird person who's really excited by that. Also, Six Sigma's wrists can swivel, so if you give him some kind of sword or something, he can totally waggle it left and right. Now here's something that made me happy. This guy has a waist joint. It's a simple cut waist joint, but yeah, it works. The range is pretty good. So, the upper body so far has been pretty good. There's also, uh, this is from the transformation, but if you want to use it as such, there is a joint in the waist. So if you want to have him go like, waggle, 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 look up and down a little bit more, you can. Also, the cannons on his back can tilt forward, uh, if you prefer that style of visual aesthetic. Or if you just want to go for pure height, put them like that. His legs are, well, they're big. You've already seen that. Uh, and they are also full of ratchets, and ratchets are what I like seeing on, uh, on something like this, especially a company's first outing, to go right out and make some ratchet joints that also, at least on my copy, work decently. Uh, it's brownie points, man. So, move this forward and oomph. Yeah, that feels good. It feels, feels like what we like. Uh, now, outwardly, there is only really one click of ratchet ro uh, rotation. Rotation? Ratchet movement, outwardly. Uh, mostly because of the size of the thighs. I think these would need to... for, the, for the, With this aesthetic, these would have had to extend out and have a second joint in the center of the axle. And perhaps it is asking a little bit much of a company's first outing. And also, 
this guy's legs are so long, I don't really think you get, uh, you would get a whole lot out of extra outward clicks, because one outward click on legs this long takes you from this to that, and that's pretty friggin' wide. We'll talk more about down there later. These kneecap things, they are uh, not really a point of articulation, but they do tend to, with all the ratchet vibration going on, get knocked out of place now and then. So, you know, when you pick him up and grab him or you grab his legs, plonk, you fixed it. He's got thigh swivels. Another thing that I'm kind of happy about, because this is where these things plug in. And given how, you know, this is supposed to be a solid connection, I could see this not having a swivel. This is done kind of cleverly. It's uh, two teeth clips that go into the circular ridge around this, which means when this is plugged in, you also get full rotation that does not stress the connection, so that's pretty cool. His knees are ratcheted, like that. Uh, the range is not quite a 90 degree bend, but again, this guy's legs are so huge that it feels like every click is worth extra because there's more stuff just moving. And finally, his uh, ankles now, the rear of the heels cannot uh, tilt, really. They, they can only do that, and that actually doesn't really help you all that much unless you've got some really particular poses going on where this toe joint can work with that pretty well. So I guess that actually is something. I, I just changed the shape of his foot from, from this to that. Okay, well, that's useful. But the tilting is all in the front. And uh, now here's a, a specific thing about standing this guy up. When you stand him straight, the heel is just a tad shorter than where the uh, front of the foot hits the ground. So he's really meant to stand less so like this, and more so like this. Uh, this is a very natural stance for Six Sigma, and you can get him standing stock still, but he just seems more comfortable to be standing uh, at this slight akimbo. So, uh, posability wise Six Sigma has a decent serviceable amount of articulation. I would not call it poor, would not call it superposable, but there's enough there for me to do stuff. And uh, I guess I'll just, since this is the first outing uh, on a full figure by before and after, I'll also just point out that the build on this guy, like he feels like a, a big chunk of plastic. He's big, uh, he's tall, and everything feels pretty solid. There is, of course, some hollowness because these are layered parts. This whole thing telescopes out. But nothing feels too fragile on him. He feels like, you know, he doesn't come apart. Given that his legs parts form off, his backpack removes. You know, you can give him the shake test. I don't think I've done one of these since, uh... I think I did this to Hercules once on the podcast. But you can shake this guy pretty hardcore and nothing's gonna come off. And you know what? Let's, let's give it a hazarded toss. Well, he does not even want to fall over because he's so tall. <laughs> That he's just leaning on the wall. All right, we'll try it one more time. You think that you can just lean on my wall? This is the Tetrajet test. You're gonna. Okay. Well, uh, that's Six Sigma posability. It's it's not bad. Durability, pretty good. Build quality feels nice. Let's uh, continue on. Seriously, you're gonna just you're gonna brick house me when I. Okay, that almost took the wall down. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him alone. The meat and potatoes of Six Sigma's transformation are in his legs. They dislodge and convert identically, with a fun combination of slides and ratchet bends. The central slide has got solid click locks at the top and bottom of its rail, and the kneecap gun sight has no click locks and really could use one. The rest of Six Sigma transforms into a kind of artillery tower. There are more dedicated components to this form change than I had originally anticipated, but I really wish the head did something more. I also wish the backpack relied on more than the friction of the white wedges that it eventually rests upon to lock in place. But don't get me wrong, that is some friction. So these guns! They're designed for Metroplex's hands, using a tab to connect to his palm slot, just like the stock cannons. The fit is a little tight, and it may take a few moments to realize just how to slip the handle underneath the Plex's thumb. But once they're in there, these firearms will not be coming loose anytime soon. They are around the same length as Metroplex's included red gun, not quite as wide, but much thicker overall. As for the tower mode, it's made to sit upon the city mode's helipad. It doesn't plug in so much as mount inside a pair of screw holes. It doesn't fall off very easily unless you, like, pick up and shake the entire city mode, so it works out fine, because why would you pick up the entire city mode and start shaking it, you crazy person? And it rotates using the waist joint of the robot mode. Also, the weaponry can all swivel up and down and shoot down planes or helicopters or pigeons. 
The tower mode is able to autonomously sit on my desk as a sort of artillery emplacement. Unfortunately, I haven't found any other obvious mounting points for this or the two red guns outside of what I've shown you already. But all the G1 basics have been covered in this feature suite. I'm just not sure if there's something I can't find, like if there's some tab or slot that's hidden in the sculpt that I'm just missing. Speaking from simply handling Six Sigma as he is here, I think he does well in visual aesthetics and physical girth. Dude is large, man. Ten inch tall indie company transforming robot is nothing to balk at. Considering that he's before and after's first full figure release, Six Sigma ain't bad, and he's a decent companion piece to the new Metroplex and Scamper. He's fairly poseable, not acrobatic, but able to take on a few Titan-like stances, and most importantly for any kind of debut piece, his build quality feels quite up to par and unfragile. The plastic is deliciously chunk. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this video has helped you figure out a few things about before and after Six Sigma. Information is power. Almost as much power as a robot made out of guns scaled to the hands of a titan the size of a city. But nowhere near as much power as that city's mayor's cocaine habit. Topical.